I, Darren, I'm interested in what questions you've been asking to inform the role. It's a it's a it's a heady group to follow, and a, and an amazing an amazing role. Had what do you do to make it your own and to and to embrace it? Um, I mean, it was really um, inevitably uh, everybody who has ever played Hedwig is part of this sort of narrative. Um, because the next time somebody plays it, because the team has been the same team, more or less, the creative heads, right down to the costumes and, and the, then the producers, they've been around since it was, it was off Broadway. So everybody has that, oh, you know, actually, when so-and-so did it, they did this, this, or that, or the other thing. And I don't take offense. I don't go, oh, I need to do my own thing. I, it's, it's great because it's a sort of through line that it's in, like not every single Hamlet is going to have talked to every other Hamlet ever before. It's, that's insane. So the fact that I get to do that for this is, is really cool. Um, uh, I didn't get to talk directly to each actor that has done it, but there will be little bits and bobs that, you know, somebody, you know, so and so did this, that really worked, and I can play with that. And, uh, just because of, of there's this sort of meta-ness to the show um, that is just inevitable because of the way that the play's conceit is, is sort of set up that um, whether I'm conscious of it or not, all actors bring a piece of themselves to something, no matter how much they bury something into a role, whether it's timing or vocal timbre or something. So um, I don't know what I specifically bring to it. Um, one of the coolest, uh, uh, pieces of feedback that I got when I was doing it on Broadway was at the end of a two-show day, there were um, some folks outside, and one guy said, man, you know what? It's crazy. I've seen a lot of headwigs. you got to be the meanest headwig I've ever seen. And I went, <laughs> wow, that's interesting. And I just, would, I mean, for whatever reason, maybe that, that show that day was informed that performance. And then within the same line, somebody else was like, you know what's cool, man, is that you're like one of the more sweeter headwigs I've ever seen. <laughs> And, and that just goes to show that there really is this active symbiosis of stuff. I mean, you know, with a grain of salt, obviously the story is the same and the script is so tight that it's, it's best not to stray away from it too much. But there is the variable of the audience, of, of the room, that it's hard to ignore. And if there's a certain give and take that sort of just yields certain attitudes sometimes. Um, so it's cool because... It really is not that actor cliche of like, well, you know, every show is different. You know, it's like it truly, really is, and the audience is a is a pretty big variable in that. Um, it changes the way we interact. Um, and again, it's it's small because you know, also we'll be having one of the writers here. I don't want to say, yeah, we got to change it every uh, every night because it's it's pretty bulletproof. It's tight, but um, it does just change it just enough to make it different. So so uh, the questions that I ask are usually. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I think I minimize my questions and stick to the script, uh, like a like a good actor should, I suppose, um, because it has worked for so long. I just wanted to make one point earlier about you were saying how um, you were kind of worried if people would immediately get behind the you being a woman playing a man being a woman and this sort of gender fluidity if that would be lost on people. And this is another compliment, Stephen, which I've just showered with him constantly. Um, uh, I've showered with him constantly. God. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I was wondering about that I just caught, caught that, yeah. Have Freudian all. slip. Talk about gender fluidity. Um, so, uh, <laughs> well, what's really great is that people don't... Stephen loves that. Uh, you were talking about your audition. I was, exactly, yeah. About <laughs> the casting couch, the shower, casting shower. Let's see how your voice sounds in the shower, young man. Oh, my God, I've got a great yeah. story. You've got to finish this. I'll, I'll, finish, I'll finish my point. Uh, but there was a line very early on when I did it on Broadway where we kind of put like a hat on me being one of the younger Hedwigs to come in. And we had this one, th it was something about like concealer or just, just to kind of poke at the fact, you know, just to say like we realized that I'm, I'm one of the younger guys. And it never played and it never worked. And when I realized it's because the character and the, and the, and the words in the play is so strong that the audience is, is, is smart. Like, you get it. Nobody goes, wait, wait, hang on, that, that's, that's a woman playing. Like, it, it, the show starts, the song hits, the character comes guns blazing, and it's so strong that everybody just goes, yep, cool, you're Hedwig. Like, you don't, you, don't, you don't even think about it. It's all about just what she's saying and how she acts. And to the credit of, of modern audiences now, people are just like, absolutely cool, I'm in, great. And that has a great deal to do with the words that Stephen and John wrote, and uh, well done.